before we continue with torque varieties, let's return to basic algebraic geometry. Now, a running theme in algebraic geometry is the local global philosophy. So typically what we'll have is some big space X, X has a topology, then there's gonna be a collection of open sets in X, and we're interested in going from the global, the big space, to the local, which would be your open sets. So if we're going from global to local, what we could do, I could take restriction of functions to the open sets. We could also take evaluation, which is a special type of restriction. In the other direction, going from local to global, okay, the type of problem you might have here is, okay, you have your open sets. On your open sets, you have functions, and you want to know if you can patch these functions together to get a global function. So that would bring in tools like sheaf theory and cohomology. Now, we're not going to do anything in this series with the second part, but restriction is going to be a good way to formalize our ideas. So let's take a look. So let's suppose I have V, an affine variety. We have an inclusion map of V into the CN where it lives. If I take any polynomial on CN, say F, well, I can get a polynomial function on V just by composition. Okay, and so that's gonna be our first instance of a morphism. Okay, in general, morphisms are gonna be built out of these type of maps. Now, what we're doing here is essentially restriction. So I'm just gonna take okay, a map from polynomials into what we call the coordinate ring for V. Now, once I've restricted to V, what's happening? Well, this map, okay, it's a map of vector spaces, actually C algebras. And we know the kernel of this map is going to be anything where restriction of V goes to zero. So that's going to be precisely the ideal for V. Now, since this is a surjective map, that means, okay, if you take this as a definition of the coordinate ring for V, the coordinate ring for V, which I write as C bracket V, is just the polynomial ring on CN modded out by the ideal for V. So this is going to be a C algebra. So it's going to have a vector space structure and a ring structure. A few things worth noting. First, V is irreducible. We noted that means that IV is prime. In turn, okay, if we're quotienting out by a prime ideal, then the coordinate ring for V is an integral domain. So we note this chain of ideas linking the geometry to ring theoretic properties. Okay, as an example, we take the variety on the okay, inside of C2 given by X1 times X2, then this is not an integral domain. Okay, this is a reducible polynomial. So the variety that goes with it will be not irreducible. And we have zero divisors given by the classes for X1 and X2. We multiply them together, we get zero. So not an integral domain. Now, with the definition of coordinate rings, we're able to define morphisms. So these are just going to be polynomial maps between varieties. That just means, okay, we'll have a polynomial map between the two ambient CNs, so say CN and CM. When we restrict to V, then the image is going to be carried into W. Okay, so all we're doing is writing our map out like so, where the Fs are polynomials. And then we would have to check that Everything is well-defined so that we carry V to W. Now, turns out, okay, this notion of morphism is gonna be equivalent to having a C algebra homomorphism between the coordinate rings. Now, you'll note we're reversing the order here because if I have a polynomial in W, I can make it a polynomial in V by precomposing. So it's gonna change the order. Next, since we have a notion of morphism, we now have isomorphism. So isomorphism is just gonna be a bijection between affine varieties such that the inverse is also a morphism. Next point, if we have two affine varieties that are isomorphic, then that's equivalent to saying that their coordinate rings are isomorphic as C algebras. Finally, okay, we won't use this, but it's worth noting, Okay, if we have R, C algebra that's finally generated and has no nilpotence, okay, note 
Coordinate rings are allowed to have zero divisors, but they're not allowed to have no potent elements. Then, that means that R is the coordinate ring for some affine variety. Okay, so we see here, once we bring in the coordinate ring, we're able to transfer a lot of ideas from the geometry to algebra, okay, ring theory, and C algebras. Now, let's take a look at some of the building blocks for torque varieties, okay, to use as examples. First up, okay, let's take a look at C star, so our one-dimensional torus. Now, this is a principal open subset of C. Okay, so here the function that we're using is just x. Okay, so x equals zero, we're getting rid of the origin. And recall, to make this an affine variety, we really look at it in one dimension up. So what I'll do is, okay, ux, we're just gonna take c2, okay, we're gonna take polynomials in two variables, and then we're gonna mod out by this polynomial here. So my f is equal to x, I add in an extra variable, and then we minus one. Now, if we look at the coordinate ring, okay, this is the ideal that we use, and we know all we're doing here effectively is just adding in another variable, x inverse. So that's gonna be the coordinate ring for the one-dimensional torus. Now, let's take a look at the group operation of inversion. If we consider C star as being in C2, realize the so, then inversion is just gonna be given by switching x and y. So what do we do here? If I switch x and y, all I'm doing is sending x to x inverse and x inverse to x. So that's inversion. The map that it comes from, 5xy equal to yx, clearly that's a polynomial map. We also note that it's its own inverse, so we have here an isomorphism from C star back to itself. We have two ways to identify C star n as an affine variety. First, we just imitate what we did in the one dimensional case. So here, we just show that C star n is a principal open subset of Cn. In this case, the function is just the product x1, x2, all the way up through xn. Then for the coordinate ring, okay, we add one more variable and then we mod out by this ideal here. So this is same as taking polynomials over C in x1, x1 inverse, all the way up through xn, xn inverse. See where the inverses come in. For x sub i inverse, okay, we'll define that to be we take the product of x1 up through xn, but we omit xi and multiply that by y. So if I multiply this object by x sub i, that's going to give us a 1, and that's how we define inverse. Now for another way, okay, we note, I could just identify C star n as a product of affine varieties. And the product of affine varieties gives us another affine variety. So here if we have v and w, say v and c to the n, w and c to the m, okay, for c to the n, we'll use x variables, for c to the m we'll use y variables. Then we take our usual set product of v cross w, for the algebraic geometry, okay, the ideal that vanishes on v cross w in c n plus m, is just gonna be generated by the ideal for v and the ideal for w, keeping track of the separate variables. Then, for the coordinate ring, we're just gonna get the tensor product of the coordinate rings. Now there's a lot more we could say here, but that gets us into abstract nonsense, so we know that there's a universal mapping property, and that'll go with the universal property for the product. Now getting back to the torus, okay, what do we have here? Well, if t equal to c star n, then for the coordinate ring, we're just gonna take an n-fold product of coordinate rings of c stars. So we put all these together, we just get what we had before. And now I'm able to check that group multiplication Okay, is gonna give us a morphism. So we note here, we're gonna have a map from T cross T going back into T. Okay, our elements in T, I'm gonna use the realization, okay, the second one. So we're gonna have these as elements in C of the 2N. And when I multiply, okay, these are just polynomials in the entries of our 
original T's. So that'll be a morphism. We also have that a complex torus is irreducible. There are two ways that we can see this. First, we know that the coordinate ring is an integral domain. So here we're just considering Laurent polynomials and several variables. Or we know that the product of irreducible affine varieties is also irreducible. So here we're just taking a product of C stars and C star itself is irreducible. Now, let's check a few facts from before just for more work with morphisms. First, we note that characters are morphisms. Okay, so what's the setup here? We have our torus T equal to C star N. To build a character, we're going to choose an N tuple of integers, say I1 through IN. Okay, we can also have zero or negative integers in there. And then we're going to have a map from our torus into C star. So the way we build this up, we take T1 through TN, we raise to the appropriate power from our tuple, and then we multiply everything together. It's not hard to see that this is a homomorphism because we have Laurent monomial on the right-hand side. Okay, that's going to be in the coordinate ring, and so we have a morphism also. So that means characters are morphisms. Another thing we can check. Okay, let's recall our setup. So we're to pick a finite set A of these n tuples, okay, m1 through ms. We're to build a map phi sub a out of that, going from our torus to c star s. We'll call the image of the torus under phi a t, and then we're going to take the Zariski closure of t. Okay, and then we claim that this is going to be an affine toric variety. So let's check that the action of t on y sub a carries us back into y sub a. So there's a group action of t on y sub a. Now, let's go through all of this. So I have t sits inside of c star s. Okay, that acts on itself in a natural manner just by group multiplication, and that extends to all of c s. Okay, and that's going to be by morphisms. So we have a group action here of t on c s. Now, this action is going to carry varieties to varieties. The way we see that, if I have, say, just the variety for a single polynomial f, if I act on it by an element t, well, you could check that's going to carry this to the variety where I take f, and in the front we put a t inverse. And because t inverse acts by morphisms, I'm composing a morphism with a polynomial, which is going to give me another polynomial. Okay, and then we can worry about doing intersections and all the other business that we do if we want to go beyond that. So it carries varieties to varieties. Now, y sub a is a small variety containing t. That's what it means to be the Zariski closure of t. So we have t contained in y sub a, but note if I multiply on both sides by an element t in the torus, okay, well, the torus times t is t itself. So that means t is contained in t times y sub a, y sub a is the smallest variety containing the torus, so I have to have that y sub a is contained in t times y sub a. Now, if we go with t inverse instead of t, I can multiply both sides by t here, and we see that t times y sub a is contained in y sub a, and so that means that these both have to be equal. So that means t is going to carry y sub a back into itself, since everything is built from morphisms, we're going to have an action of T on Y sub A. To finish, we describe the coordinate ring for a distinguished open subset inside of V. Let's suppose the ideal for V is generated by F1 through Fs. We'll pick a non-zero F bar in the coordinate ring. Okay, let's suppose as representative F as a polynomial. And distinguished open subset then is just going to be take V, throw away the variety for F. Now, as before, to get the ideal for this open subset, we're just going to go up one dimension. So we add in another variable Y. The ideal for this variety will be generated by F1 through Fs and F times Y minus 1. Now, simplify things. Let's just assume that V is irreducible. 
So then the coordinate ring is an integral domain and we're allowed to divide in the field of fractions. Now for the coordinate ring, what will we do? Well, we're just gonna take the coordinate ring for V, okay, we'll join a variable and then we'll mod out by this ideal. Since we're allowed to divide, effectively what we're doing is, okay, we're taking elements inside of the coordinate ring for V and we're just gonna be able to divide by powers of F. Now, this may seem familiar in abstract algebra, okay, ring theory, this is just how we localize when we have an integral domain. So this is just gonna be the localization of F. And this will be important for torque varieties later on.